Pandemic lockdowns destroyed businesses and kept families apart, but they also, for the first time in American history, forcibly kept Americans from attending worship services. Of course, if you wanted to go to the mall or Walmart, that was fine, but church, that was too dangerous. A number of congregations have fought back and won in the courts. To discuss as part of our Faith in America series this week, we welcome senior pastor of the Harvest Rock Church, the Reverend Shay Ahn. Reverend, Reverend Ahn, good to see you. Well, thank you, Tom, for having me on your program. You know, uh, religious freedom is our first freedom, Reverend. Uh, it's so critical to the American story. Did you ever think that we would see a time where government was interfering to the extent that it has on our ability to worship? No, I mean, it was a shock from the very beginning when Governor Newsom declared the church to not be essential. And with all due respect, the church has been essential for 2,000 years. Yeah. In a few weeks, we're going to be celebrating Resurrection Sunday, and uh, lives have been changed by uh, believing in Jesus Christ. And I was a drug addict. I was a high school dropout. I was part of the whole hippie revolution, selling drugs. And when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, it changed my life, and I felt called to serve people. And so I've been now pastoring now for 41 years. And so think about the church and how the church and the gospel of Jesus Christ has impacted people around the world. So when they locked down the church, and by the way, abortion clinics were considered essential. That's right. Of course, essential. Marijuana dispensaries, essential because, of course, uh, California has legalized marijuana, but I used to take, and uh, it really killed my brain cells. And, um, and it's only by the grace of God I'm still alive. But nevertheless, when they declared us not being essential, uh, we appealed. And uh, just by a letter, just uh, to Governor Newsom. And then I also sent a letter to our city council and to the police department, to the mayor in Pasadena. And I just said that we believe our First Amendment rights are being violated because the state should not establish a state religion nor interfere with the free exercise thereof. And so we are going to meet on Pentecost Sunday. We had already missed Easter that year, of course, last year. Right. And we missed our anniversary service and all the other events around uh, this time of the year, uh, Palm Sunday, et cetera. And so when we said that, they didn't reply. They didn't give us one notice. And then, of course, uh, when uh, Newsom locked down the church uh, and, uh, and really locked down restaurants and gyms, et cetera, right. uh, we... At the same time, he's commending the rioters. The, as George Ford's death was tragic, but we saw 100,000 in Hollywood marching, no social distancing, no masks, shoulder to shoulder, and he gets on the press and does a press conference and commends them. He says, your voices need to be heard. You must exercise right. your First Amendment rights. And then he says, God bless you. And I'm thinking <laughs> right. to myself, what about our First Amendment rights? Yeah, you, you fought you fought back against Gavin Newsom in the courts, and, and you won. Uh, you, do you think this has been a wake-up call for other congregations? We saw the Catholic Church and the Jewish communities in, in New York and on the East Coast uh, fighting in the courts. They went all the way to the Supreme Court. They won. Do you think that this has been a wake-up call for folks to defend religious freedom in this country? Absolutely, but... Unfortunately, a lot of churches are still scared and pastors are scared. And, uh, you know, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, God's not given us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. That word fear is a very unusual Greek word, is dilea, only appears two times in the New Testament. And it's different from the other Greek word for fear, which is phobos, okay. or we get phobia from. That word dilea means cowardice, being a coward. So God has asked us as Christians not to be cowards, to use wisdom. So we right. mitigate. We encourage people with underlying condition and elderly to stay home sure. and walk them line. We took everyone's temperature as they walked in. We sanitized the place every time we used our building. We wore masks to the building. And so, you know, the thing is, is that I feel uh, even as Jay, the Secretary of State, Ashcroft said in the previous segment, he said, you know, we've trusted the citizens. They're adults. They're not kids. Right. But unfortunately, our state is so progressively left. It's just government control. They want to control everything yeah. instead of allowing we, the people, to make the decision that I believe uh, is in our Constitution to do so.
Reverend, when people watch television, when they pick up the newspaper or when they're, uh, when they're on social media, a lot of people say, you know, it seems like this country is unrecognizable, that their values are literally being trampled on, and, and it decreases their hope in the American system. When you speak to your congregation, I know you speak to audiences all over the world, uh, what do you say to those folks who are starting to lose hope? Well, the Bible promises that the kingdom of this world will become the kingdom of our Lord and of his, of his Christ in Revelation eleven fifteen. In other words, that Jesus is ruling and reigning right now, and he will continue to rule and reign. The church has expanded uh, from the first century church to now over two and a half billion followers of Jesus. And at the end of the day, we win because God's going to pour out his spirit in the last days. There's going to be a tremendous revival, a tremendous move of the Holy Spirit. And we believe that more souls are going to be saved. And that's why we want to open up. We want to see people come to know Jesus. And we want to comfort believers who are absolutely depressed and discouraged because it's not just a physical well-being. Think about the suicides. Think about drug overdose. Think about marriages that have suffered tremendously during this COVID outbreak yeah. or even domestic violence and child abuse. And so there's so many other issues. And what I was praying for, I, I pray for a Governor Newsom every day. I don't hate him. I, I really pray for our leaders. I pray God give him wisdom. I also pray for his salvation because even though he's Roman Catholic, I, I see him really persecuting Christians here in the state. And of course, we're sure. killing 200 thousand babies every year. Yeah. We've had 50,000 lost in COVID, but 200,000 we have intentionally killed in California. And so I'm praying, actually, I'm praying that God would either save him or remove him. And I didn't know that we we're going to have this recall and that we have gained uh, steam and we have now 2 million signatures. And, and I believe that and hopefully he will be recalled. All right. Well, Reverend Shayon from the Harvest Rock Church in Pasadena, thank you for standing up for religious freedom and spreading a message of hope. Well, thank you so much.